Hey guys, uh, this week we're starting on doing some Bible and history together. It's not going to be uh, the same amount that we would be doing in class. I don't want to ask you that much. You'll have your normal uh, Monday, the worksheet, and the test on Friday, but the test won't be as long and you don't have to do the timeline. Um, the test will actually probably be on Schoology. Uh, and you'll just take the test online. Uh, you do still have to do uh, your Bible verse and catechism. You can either video yourself and send that to me, saying them, or you can recite it to a parent and they can just let me know um, how many words you miss when you do those. Um, and you'll have, you'll have a couple activities to do this week for Bible and history, but it really won't be much. There will be a Quizlet on um, Thursdays for you to just review for the test. Um, but today we're um, going to do our Bible verse. So go ahead and get out your memory books. Our Bible verse is Ephesians 4.25. So I'll give you all a second to get there, to flip there. Just one verse. It's not very long. It says, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So obviously we've been talking a lot about unity and being more like Christ in this, um, in Ephesians 4. And this one is um, uh, telling you to be truthful, be truthful to your neighbor. And if you remember from the Bible, your neighbor is just not the people, is not just the people that live next door to you, but everybody is your neighbor. So um, speak truth to them. So that's Ephesians 4.25. Your catechism is question 77. The question says, to whom is baptism to be administered? The answer, baptism is to be administered to all those who actually profess repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and to none other. So the only people that should be baptized are those that are true Christians that have repented, that have confessed their sins and confess uh, that they um, and profess their faith in God in Jesus and no one else and all Christians should be baptized and no one that is not a Christian should be baptized but also remember that baptize that baptism does not save you uh, that's really important to remember that getting baptized does not make you a Christian it's just a an outward sign of what has happened on the inside and the change in your heart um, so your um, being baptized does not save you. And if you do not get baptized, um, that doesn't mean you are not saved. But it is an important uh, thing to do. You are being obedient to the Bible that does tell you to get baptized. Uh, and you can find some verses more about baptism in Acts 2.38, Matthew 3.6, Mark 16.16, 16, Acts 8.12, and 36 and 37 and Acts 10, 47 through 48. All right, now getting into our Bible lesson for the week, we are finally finishing Esther. Should have been only a three week thing, which it still is, but we also basically skipped three weeks. We haven't been talking about it. So um, to kind of review what's been going on in Esther, um, the king, Ahasuerus, uh, kicked out Queen Vashti. He was upset with her. He told her she was no longer allowed to be queen. Uh, he was afraid that uh, people would see her disobedience and um, would start acting that way. So he told her he kicked her out of being queen, had to find a new one. And we all know that eventually that was Esther chosen. Um, but what people don't know at Esther's time, the king and other people around her do not know that one is that Esther is a Jew and two, that her cousin is Mordecai. Um, now remember Mordecai ends up saving the king's life. The king kind of forgets about it though. He's really excited. He's really happy about it, but then he kind of forgets about it. And then, um, Haman is he's kind of the king's right-hand man. And there's an order that everyone is to bow to Haman, but Mordecai refuses because he knows he shouldn't. 
which makes Haman so angry that Haman wants Mordecai to die. And not just Mordecai. He knows Mordecai is a Jew and he wants all the Jews to be killed. He goes to the king. The king approves it. Now there's an order out that all Jews in the area must be killed. What the king and Haman don't know is that Esther is also a Jew. And uh, we talked about, um, when we were talking about this so long ago, how uh, even though Esther, the book of Esther, does not actually mention God's name at all in the whole book, but we can still see God's hand over this whole situation. He is the one that chose Esther to be queen at this time in order to save her people. God is always saving his people. His people have been endangered so many times and he finds ways to save them throughout the Bible. And this is one of them. Um, so he uses Esther. There is a bug flying around and it's driving me nuts. Sorry. Uh, he uses Esther to save his people. And we read about that in Esther's seven and eight on our card, Esther saves the Jews. I'm not kind of, I don't have you, um, I don't have a study guide for you guys to do. I don't want you to have to worry about that. So I actually took a picture of the card and posted that on Schoology. So you have that uh, to use for your worksheet and to study for your test at the end of the week. Uh, but I'm still going to go ahead and read it to you and kind of talk about it as normal. Um, so Esther Saves the Jews is found in Esther 7 and 8, uh, and it takes place around 510 B.C. Queen Esther heard of Haman's intentions to destroy the Jews. She knew that if she went to the king without being summoned, she risked her life. If the king was pleased with the uninvited visitor, he would extend his golden scepter. Death was the punishment if the king did not extend his scepter. So Esther knew that she was putting her life in danger by going to the king uninvited. He could have her killed. Even though she was the queen, she was not supposed to go to the king uninvited. He could have her killed if he didn't, if he was not happy with her showing up. Esther, along with her maidens, fasted and prayed for three days. Then Esther approached Ahasuerus and invited the king and Haman to a banquet. On two consecutive nights, Esther held a banquet for the king and Haman. Meanwhile, Haman had built a gallows at his, at his house upon which he intended to hang Mordecai. So while Esther... She went to the king. She, uh, even though she wasn't summoned, he did not kill her, obviously. And she invited the king and Haman to a banquet um, two nights in a row. And while this is going on, Haman had built gallows, which is what people would be hung on as a form of execution at that time. Um, he had built that to hang Mordecai. He was ready for this to happen. At the second banquet, Esther accused Haman of plotting murder. The king was so enraged that he left the hall. Haman flung himself at Esther to beg for his life. At that moment, Hazarus returned to the hall, and the scene before him led him to believe that Haman was assaulting the queen. So while the king was gone, Haman started begging with Esther. But when the king came back, it looked as if Haman was assaulting Esther. He ordered Haman to be hung on the very gallows he had built for Mordecai. Esther was given Haman's house, and after revealing her relationship to Mordecai, she set her cousin over Haman's house. Ahasuerus ordered that the Jews had the right to defend themselves on the day that, that the Jews were to be exterminated. The anniversary of that day is celebrated as the Feast of Purim. Um, so. After all this, the king is so angry, he actually has Haman killed on the very gallows that he had built for Mordecai. Uh, and then Esther is placed over Haman's house. And once it's discovered that Esther and Mordecai are related, she places Mordecai over Haman's house. Um, so obviously God used Esther in this place, in this time. They were not in Israel anymore. They were in a foreign land, but God placed her in this uh, place of authority to help save his people, the Jews. Uh, so even though 
God's name is not actually mentioned in the book of Esther. We see his hand and his sovereignty throughout the entire book. So go ahead and do your worksheet. You'll find that on Schoology. You can print it out and answer the questions. If you can't print it, just write like, you know, number one, write number one and write the answer on a on a piece of paper and then just submit that instead. But if you can print it, that would be easiest for me to be able to grade it. Um, as always, let me know if you have any questions.